If you've ever looked at any of the comparisons made between Django and other frameworks, one of the strengths or one of the perceived strengths or benefits of Django is the Django ORM. So we're going to take a little look at the Django ORM here and just demystify what the Django ORM is. So there's two things I want to cover here. What is ORM and why ORM? And of course, I'm going to tell you what ORM stands for in a second. So let's get going. As we've already established, the Django Web Framework includes a default object relational mapping layer, ORM. This can be also referred to as the object relational mapper. The ORM isn't a Django specific technology. This is something that you might find in other languages and other frameworks. Take, for example, if you're utilizing or using Flask, uh, the Flask framework, sorry, you might utilize or hook into the SQL Alchemy, which is a, another ORM. Of course, Django has its own ORM. It's a very powerful tool and has developed or evo evolved, sorry, over the years since it was created. Okay, so we've established there's something called an ORM and it's kind of widespread in different languages and frameworks. So we've established that the ORM is quite widespread. This isn't a Django specific technology. So what exactly does the ORM provide us as developers? The Wikipedia description here, converting data between incompatible type systems using object orientated programming languages. This pretty much sums up what an ORM does, but it doesn't really make it very clear exactly. So let's drill down into this. So we all know a Django application. If you haven't used Django before, apologies. So a Django application we write in Python or the Python language. So in Django, if we wanted to collect data from the database, or maybe we wanted to send data to a database or change the database schema, the structure of the database, we would use, or we would do that using Python. So for example, here we have a statement here, student.objects.all. So to break this down, we have on the left-hand side, student is the name of the table. Objects here is the manager. So a manager in Django, or the, a manager is a Django class, sorry, that provides an interface between database query operations and the Django model. And at the end of here, we have an instruction, all. So what this is essentially saying in Python language is that we want to collect all the data from the table student. So let's think of this student.objects.all as a Python object. Now we want to collect all the data about the student from the database. So that gets sent across to the ORM. Now the ORM is going to change, or loosely speaking, it's going to map across the object that the, the Python object that we've created to a database object. So here, for example, um, we could loosely say that we're going from the Python language to the SQL language. Now SQL is a language which the database understands and can perform requests. So this is an example here, student.objects.all. Like I said before, that's going to collect or tell the database that I want all the data about the student from the student table. Here, for example, is the SQL equivalent, select all from student. So in a lot of respects, object relational mapping, ORM, what it does is kind of in its name, it takes an object, a Python objects, and it creates a relational mapping across to the database. So it takes the object and then maps that information across to I say loosely speaking again, SQL, in order to collect the data from the database. And the database re returns data to the ORM, and then we can map across the database object returned to the Python object so that we can then deal and manage with that data within our Django application. Knowing that, the long story short here is that we are trying to interact with our database using our language of choice instead of SQL. And then I can follow that up by saying, when we develop, we no longer need to worry about SQL and learning SQL. We can just use our native language of Python and perform database operations utilizing Python. 
So I just add this, if you're not familiar with SQL, what this means by SQL, I think like I've said, SQL is the language of choice utilized by databases or a standard language for dealing with relational databases. So if you're using MySQL database, Postgres, Oracle, all of these relational databases utilize SQL, the structured query language, um, to make actions or perform actions or manipulate the database in some certain way. So it's just the language of choice for databases to um, perform actions on the database. Now, one of the benefits of this, maybe you follow some of the tutorials in this series, we've moved from a MySQL database, sorry, a MySQL Lite database to, um, for example, the Postgres database. So one of the benefits of working in this way, which we can describe as application independent from the database management system, it allows us to kind of move from database to database because we, we don't need to worry about this abstracted layer here. We can just continue writing in Python and then the RM should then translate that into the specific uh, SQL syntax needed by the database, regardless of the database we're using. Now I say that lightly, um, because there can be complications for moving from one database to the next and databases, whether you're utilizing uh, MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, and so on, they do all have their own um, facilities and functions and features, sorry, um, additional features that you can utilize. So it isn't always a straightforward match across if you wanted to, for example, one day use a Postgres SQL database and then map everything across to the Oracle database. There could still be some problems there. So hopefully that gives you a starting point, understanding what ORM does or what we need it for. So again, we could ask ourselves, well, why ORM? I guess that's a slightly different question. Um, so developers write Python code instead of SQL. Okay, so that's a, the, the main kind of benefit here, potentially initially for developers, um, that we don't have to learn SQL if you're not familiar with SQL. So as you move through this series, um, you'll see that writing Python instead of SQL ultimately leads to us writing less code in some cases. So ultimately following the one of the Django principles or one of the Django benefits um, of creating applications very quickly, um, this does provide us the ability to write Python code instead of SQL, which can speed up web application development, or at least at the, in the beginning. And like I said, it can make it easy for us to migrate to different databases. Just taking a look at the next step of how this actually works, I just wanted to draw your attention to something called a database driver or database adapter. So as I've mentioned, we have these Python objects and they get translated into database objects, but we need some sort of transport um, facility in order to get the data from the RRM to the database in a reliable way and in a way that both items or, or both entities can communicate with each other. So we need some sort of bridge here and this is the adapter driver. And the this is a, a set of library functions that allows the client program uh, to pass queries to the, for example, Postgres database backend server and receive the results of the queries also. So it's kind of a back and forward. So we can send data to a database and also retrieve data uh, utilizing this adapter or driver. So for anyone who's connected a Postgres database to Django, for example, you know that you've downloaded or you've installed this via pip and then you've had to configure it or apply it to the settings file or define it, sorry, in the settings file. So this here, this package here is exactly that. This is the um, database driver or database adapter, which is going to allow um, the functionality of passing the data across from our Django application to the database and back again. Okay, so let's just summarize. Why would you want to use an RM? Not that you maybe have a choice of Django, but why would you want to use an RM? Well, it allows us to write in the language that we're already using. Um, we can easily switch from, for example, MySQL to Postgres database. The ORM provides additional features out the box. So there are some powerful tools that are already built in, they're available, we can use them straight away utilizing the ORM. And in addition to that, if you're not familiar utilizing SQL, queries can ultimately perform better because the ORM can translate what you've written in 
uh, in Python, sorry, into SQL more effectively than potentially you can write SQL. So just to generalize some of the weaknesses of ORM, potentially that if you're coming from a very strong SQL background, this can seem a little bit strange utilizing an ORM because you know that you know how to manipulate or create SQL in a way that's really fine tuned and potentially has performance enhancements over what maybe the ORM provides. In addition to that, the ORM, or essentially then the ORM potentially has a scope for reduced performance. There is something also called the impendence mismatch. So remember we're moving data from objects to and from the tables. So sometimes there can be issues there with translating the data over to the database and back again. So that's something that you might want to read up. It's fairly kind of interesting topic, impendence mismatch. So the last two, the initial configuration of the ORM. So as I've already kind of touched upon, if you come back, come from an SQL background, this can be a little bit strange utilizing the ORM, knowing that you already know how to optimize SQL. So the initial configuration of the ORM in general can obviously cause you to have to develop that knowledge already. And understanding and utilizing the ORM doesn't necessarily get you exposed to the SQL. As I've already alluded to, SQL is king in terms of uh, utilizing it to manipulate, change, update, delete, manage our database. So it can be a useful skill to understand SQL. So one thing with the ORM is that it can provide this level of, ex of extraction. So you don't actually get to see the SQL. So sometimes that leaves you um, trying to work out, well, what's going on? And then some may say that not really understanding what the program is doing ultimately doesn't leave you in a, a good position as a developer. So this is why I created this tutorial series. So we're now going to go over some of the basics of ORM, how to interact with the database, and then look at the SQL and try and see how that matches across to give you a better understanding of what you're actually doing when you write out um, your database statements in Python, and then what's actually happening behind the scenes in terms of the SQL. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial where we start to actually look at manipulating and going through different queries with the Django ORM.